to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 5, Lesson 1, Space Fighter, Introduction and Project Setup. And before we get into this lesson, I want to give you a few tips that will help you through the next few weeks of this course. The project that we're going to be making in these weeks is slightly more complex than anything we've been making in the past. And when you add complexity, that means there's more than one path to accomplishing the tasks so the way I'm doing it may not be the way you want to do it for your project, and that's okay. If you do make a different choice than me, I'd love to see how you change things around, and maybe you can even find a better way to do something. And throughout this course, there have been challenges that I presented to you. If you haven't yet, this is a great time to start attempting those challenges. You should be a little bit more comfortable now working in Unreal Engine and the challenges are a great way for you to really demonstrate that you understand the material rather than just following along. And the last tip is to try to put your own little spin on these projects. Try to make the project unique to you. There's no benefit to there being hundreds of carbon copies of the project that I make out there. And really this is the fun part of game dev. So try to find little ways that you can make this your own unique project that you can share to others. Now, there's only two objectives for this lesson, but there's a lot packed in. So first, I'm gonna demonstrate the Space Fighter game loop, and I'm gonna to talk to you about the game that we're gonna be making, and then we'll create our project foundation. Now, a lot of this is gonna be things we've done already, so I'll fast forward through the parts that are redundant. So the game we're gonna be making is a top-down view of a player ship, and the player controls the ship movement with WASD, and mouse clicks. The camera in our game is going to be moving along a rail through the level. Enemy ships will spawn the level and the player must destroy or dodge them, and the enemies will drop various rewards when they're destroyed. When an enemy ship or projectile collides with the player's ship, the ship becomes damaged. And when the player's ship's health becomes zero, the ship is destroyed and a new ship will spawn as long as the player has additional ships available. Let's demonstrate some gameplay. And here I am in a project that I already made. Now the game that we're gonna be making will be slightly different than this, but let's go ahead and show the gameplay. So you can see here that I am a player shift and I can move around my ship and these enemies are spawning. And when I destroy the enemy ships, they will spawn some loot for me. If the ship collides with me, you'll see the health bar in the bottom right corner depletes a little bit. And I can also upgrade my weapons using one, two, and three. And now you'll notice that the enemy ships will be destroyed much faster. And that's the game we're gonna make or something similar to it. And here's what that project setup is gonna look like. We're gonna create our project. We're gonna create a new level. We're gonna create our game mode class. We're going to create a player camera class. We're going to create our ship base class. Then we'll set up our ship movement events and we'll set up a fire main weapon event. When we started this course, we were using Unreal Engine 5.0.3 and since then 5.1.1 has come out. Now it doesn't make that much of a difference. You can continue to use either version for the remainder of this course but I just wanted to make you aware that I will be using 5.1.1 for this project. So feel free to download that version of Unreal Engine, or you can continue to use 5.0.3. But if you continue to use 5.0.3, things may not be exactly the same as I'm doing them in my project.
And just like before, we're gonna start with a blank project, blueprints, desktop, maximum starter content on ray tracing off. And I'm gonna call my project Space Fighter, but you can call it whatever you want. And here's our project. First thing I'm gonna do is create two folders. The first one is gonna be for blueprints, and the next one will be for our level. In this levels, let's go ahead and save current level. And then I'm gonna create a new level. So file, new level. We'll use the basic one and that way the lighting is already set up for us, but feel free to use an empty one if you wanna set up your own lighting. There's our level. I'm gonna call this sandbox. Let's go into our blueprints. I'm gonna create a game mode. In my level, I'm gonna drag in a player start and set this location to 000. And we'll notice that this is clipping through this floor. So I'm gonna take the floor, I'm gonna move it down by 100. And now we can see our entire player start is not clipping through the floor anymore. For this game, we want the player's viewport to be static or eventually moving along a rail, but we wanna be able to control a player ship within that viewport without affecting the camera movement. To do this, we're actually gonna use two different classes. We're gonna create a player camera class, which will show the view of the player, and then we'll create a player ship class, which will be the ship and the level. So the first one we create is the player camera, and this will be a pawn. And now I think we have enough to at least get started. So let's go to edit, project settings, maps and modes, set our game mode and we'll set sandbox to our default maps as well and then in our game mode let's set the default pawn to player camera and in player camera we really just need one thing we need a spring arm and then attached to that we need a camera and we want the view of this camera to be up and over the player so let's rotate this up to somewhere like 70 or 80 and for the spring arm, I want the distance to be quite a ways up. So let's start with something like 2000 and let's compile and hit play. And here we can see we're just looking down on the floor, which is what we want. Now let's set up our ship class. And this again will be a pawn. And let's add a static mesh. I'm gonna choose a cone and this is so we can see where the front of the ship is. And let's go ahead and create a new custom event. And this is gonna be called spawn ship. And for now, let's just spawn actor. And it's gonna be player ship. And we'll use get actor transform self and spawn that in. And let's call this on begin play. And here with our spring arm selected, we just need to go into our camera collision and deselect do collision test. And this is so that when something collides with that spring arm, it doesn't automatically adjust the camera view. We want the camera view to be static. So we'll deselect this. And when we press play, we'll now see that we've spawned our ship into the level and it's facing the correct direction. Now we're gonna be wanting to reference this player ship throughout our game. So I'm gonna drag off of this pin and say promote to variable. I'm just gonna call this player ship. And if you notice the variable type is BP player ship. And this means whenever we want to do something to the player ship through the player camera class, we can use this variable. So next let's set up some player inputs. Edit, project settings. And just like in previous games, we're gonna need a few inputs. We'll need two axis mappings and we'll call the first one move ship up and we'll call the second one move ship right. And both of these will have two buttons. The first one is going to be W, S, and the S will be minus one. This will be D and A and A will be minus one. And the last one I wanna set up is an action mapping. And this one's just gonna be called fire main weapon. And this will be left mouse click. 
And in my player camera, I'm just gonna add those three events. And that wraps up this first lesson. And the next lesson, we'll get our ship moving around in our level.